Listen up, everybody. If you want to have a place to learn how to be a professional wrestler, to be the best professional wrestler you can be, and if you're right here in southern or central Maine, I want you to check us out. We're North Atlantic Wrestling Camp. You can reach us at 776-3708. We're based right here in Buxton, Maine. We're at 288 Narragansett Trail. You can catch us on Facebook at North Atlantic Wrestling Camp. You can catch us on the email at nawcamp at yahoo.com. We teach everything you need to know. We start right with the basics from day one. We teach character development, promos, how to be safe in the ring, how to protect your opponent in the ring. If you want to be the the best you can be, you come and give us a call, you drop us a line, and we'll help you start the first step in your journey to be the best pro wrestler you can be. Big Bet Harmon, what's going on, brother? Hey. Nothing. Oh, there you are. Hey. <laughs> I was um, trying to slow play you, asshole. <laughs> slow play me. Wow. Uh, we're not playing Texas Hold'em here, pal. We're doing a goddamn podcast. Oh. Yeah. What's uh, what's going on, man? What have you been up to? Work. Work. Went to wrestling last working. week. Yeah, working. Went to two wrestling shows last week, actually, because... You're an animal. NAWA was on Thursday, and then Limitless yeah. was on Friday. Absolutely, yeah. Limitless was uh was badass. We're gonna oh be talking. God. We're gonna be talking more Limitless uh, next week, uh, along with a uh, awesome interview with Anthony Henry. So, take a little break from Limitless, though, and a little break from the local stuff. We haven't talked about uh, WWE all month at all. We, I don't think we've mentioned like one word really of current WWE products. So we're going to kind of do a month in review uh, with uh, with what's been going on with, with WWE. They've had a couple pay-per-views, Great Balls of Fire, Battleground, crazy angle with Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle. Uh, weird, weird stuff going on there. So <laughs> yeah, somebody, so. Must, somebody must have thought that was sounded like a good idea. I know. Yeah, so weird. So we're going to talk all that tonight. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, Before we dive in, let's do uh, some quick plugs. Uh, You guys can find us on Twitter at Main Event Pod. Find us on Podbean and iTunes. Um, That's uh, really about it for us. But uh, Wrestlers Laboratory has got something really cool coming up. They've got One Giant Leap. It's a pre-show. For the Battle Club Pro show, the Bounty in Kings County. That show is August 11th. It is 185 Ellery Street in Brooklyn, New York. It's featuring a fatal four way elimination match to crown the first ever Wrestlers Laboratory Nucleus Champion. Uh, and the four members in that match are Trevor Aon, Tyler Matrix, Mr. Grimm, and Danger Kid, hailing from the great state of Maine. Uh, we just saw Mr. Grimm and Andrew Kid at Limitless the other night. So, sure both, did. Both uh, some main event podcast faves there, but uh, obviously we're rooting. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Grimm, and he, um, he's like, "Oh yeah, you guys, are, you guys are uh, sponsoring that." I said, "Yeah." He says, "You going down?" I go, "Nope, can't get the day off from work." <laughs> yeah, I know it's so far. I mean, we we would if it was a little bit closer. I'd make something work, but man, it's so damn far. He's, um, like you're, he's like, you're helping to sponsor the event. You can't get the day off. I go, nope. My boss has that day off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bummer. But uh, yeah, but if you're in the area in Brooklyn or around the New York area, it's August 11th, um, 185 Ellery Street. Go there. Um, get tickets for the Bounty in Kings County. And One Giant Leap is for free. So it's going to be crazy. Some other... Uh, wrestlers on the card flip gordon's going to be there aiden agro alexander lee josh briggs sully banger ken dixon all going to be in attendance putting on a crazy show uh it's going to be great it's going to be super awesome so go there and uh let's see up next real quick i uh, want to give a shout out to that wrestling club uh their box just came this past week and uh 
It was a good I, one. It was a really good one. It was crazy. It's high level. So um, I'm going to have an unboxing coming out pretty soon. God, I haven't even put that thing out yet, but it'll, uh, it might be out by the time this thing airs. Hopefully uh, we'll see, but uh, crazy, crazy autograph. God, you're a slacker. I know. I've got nothing else going on in my life. It's just doing unboxing videos all day. I'm sick and tired of your excuses, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many. Um, but yeah, if uh, you guys want to sign up for that wrestling club, go to thatwrestlingclub.com. Uh, if you type in the code Maine, as in the state of Maine, M-A-I-N-E, as in the main event podcast, you guys know, uh, you're going to get 10% off uh, your first month. And uh, you can follow them at that wrestle club on Twitter. That's it, man. That's the plugs. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Anything crazy stick out this month from you that you like? I uh, uh, just to go back to about wrestling club, uh, wrestle club. I haven't heard uh, Molly got uh -huh. her first one, you know, fellow uh, main event insider. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, she's and, an insider uh, now. Yeah, and, lim and limitless model. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. she got her first that wrestle great this month. Uh, wrestle club, that wrestling club, that wrestling club. Come on, Harmon, Jesus. I know. Get I've together. got. I've got an entire year of boxes stacked up in the corner of my room over here. I know. I'm. Uh, I might need those boxes. <clears throat> what? I, guess, I don't know. I got something going on. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, good stuff there from that wrestling club. I was trying to give them away the other day. I'm like, anybody need boxes for Christmas or birthdays or? No, I need anything. them. Give them to me. I need them. My wife needs them for teaching school things. So, yes, I'll take them. She took last year's. I know. It's crazy. She needs them again. New new year, new class. You know, come on. God, those things happen every year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a, new, a new crop of kindergartners come in. <laughs> yep. Okay. Anyway, man. Uh, Great Balls of Fire. You want to start there? That happened. That was a Yeah. Th this one was actually surprising because uh, they did a, like, SmackDown and Raw did a flip-flop. This was a really good event yeah it's funny because like raw has I, f I felt kind of been like floundering and then uh smackdown has been you know uh, outshining them every week i think at least and that's my opinion and then yeah they get to the pay-per-views and great balls of fire was really good and battleground kind of sucked so um uh, i, I mean, thought uh, yeah to start off i mean we had the pre-show had a pretty good match with neville and akira tozawa yeah, great match. Great match. Um, I, I like Tozawa. I, I was gonna say, I like Tozawa too. I mean, I love Neville, but as like an up and oh, comer, yeah. as an up and comer, Tozawa is fucking awesome. And uh, I'm, I can't, I'm I can't not. Wait, I can't wait till we see like, like, uh, like mischievous Tozawa. Yeah, like when he was in the classic, he was really cool because I thought his attitude was neat and he was kind of dirty and just like badass I, i'm not digging like this super baby face tozawa with like titus well, and i've heard stories where like him and kevin owens you know back in the day used to tag team and they were awesome yeah huh so interesting what do you think of his of his uh of the whole titus brand thing speaking of uh, i could i could take it or leave it i mean it's yeah. it's, it's kind of working for the baby face part of it i guess yeah and, and titus isn't coming off as a total dick Right, which which he was like trying to do for a long time. Yeah, uh, I think man, Titus is just horrible, probably. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, the guy's got the size, and I don't. I wouldn't say he's like a terrible worker. I mean, he's okay, but nothing is like great about him. But it just nothing's clicked. And then he obviously had that incident with Vince a while ago, and I don't know. He seems like a decent dude. I, I just don't know why why it's not like clicking for him. I guess. And didn't they? Um, didn't they? They sat him out for another month for something, didn't they? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. It's it's strange the way a that banned substance or something. I can't remember what it was. He he had like a month off or something else too. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. But anyway, yeah, I don't mind the the Titus thing, Titus Worldwide. Um, I think it could work for guys like uh, Apollo Cruz who. It uh, doesn't really have like a great voice, you know, can't really speak very well. And not to say that Tazawa speaks better, but it's just like he, I think he has more of a personality um, with his actions. So, but uh, I don't know. I think Tazawa would be fine out on his own. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Up next, there's like Bray versus Seth, 
was like the opening match on the on the card on like the main card, which is a weird spot for that match. I thought, yeah, um, that's uh, that's like main event quality match. You know, probably two years ago. <laughs> okay, good. I, I'm glad you added that in there because I was, yeah, like two years ago that would have been great. Um, but I don't know the, the mishandling of Bray Wyatt. I, I don't know it if continues. Yeah, it just continues, and I don't know if if they're capable of coming back from it. You know, I think it's gone too far now where. I can't really take Bray seriously. Um, I mean, he does go over in this match. He beats Seth Rollins, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's only like his first win in like three years. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like his uh, first win ever on a pay-per-view, I think. It, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't think the match was like very good either. I thought it was... It's a, It was a weird spot for it. Usually the first match has got to be like a barn burner and it's got to get the crowd into it. And these guys are just like, yeah, the yeah. pace of this match wasn't, wasn't first match pacing. No. Well, I don't I think, know. I don't think that's a good spot for Bray. I mean, he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a really fast pace like that. He's theatrical and he stops the match and he does his back bend thing and it's creepy. And like, that's not a, I think they should have put the, uh, the Miz Dean Ambrose match first. Yeah, that would have been a better spot for it, for sure. Um, but even that match was like, I thought that match was decent, um, but I, I didn't like, the, I don't like the, I guess I don't like the, uh, just them feuding. I don't like the booking of that match because I just like, eh, I've seen this before. Like, this is a recycled SmackDown, you know, feud. So yeah. uh, I like the addition of the Miz Taraj, though. I do like right. that. Um, it definitely gives Bo and Axel something to do, so that's good. <laughs> um, now, the, 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 the second match on this card, the Enzo Mori big cast match. What Did it make match. anybody else feel uncomfortable? Mm, My, Angela, Angela sat on the couch, like, cringing at it. She's like, I can't watch this. She's like, this makes me so uncomfortable. They were best friends. They were like brothers. Oh, just, and, just because of that? Or was it because it was so one-sided? <laughs> oh, and that, that's why, because it was just so one-sided. She's like, why is Cass being such a jerk about it? I'm like, he sees that Enzo is in his way, holding him back. He's got to get him out of the way. And now the little flea won't leave. He just keeps running his yap yeah i don't and that's another thing i don't know you know i talk i talked about um their mistreatment of bray and coming back from that i don't know if enzo is capable of coming back from this i mean i think that they could definitely put him someplace but i feel like these two guys are so similar and so connected that it's going to be really hard for them both to go off and do single stuff i think um, one, one of them has got to switch brands I think so too. I've thought, I've thought that cast needs to go over to SmackDown and do, and and like, I don't know, maybe maybe get rid of uh, Ellsworth and and team them back up with Carmella because, or or she comes over to Raw or something because they got to get those two back together. Talk about two people that are, I mean, one they're dating in real life, right? And so. And their 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 gimmicks are very Cass, Cass and Carmella are yeah right, right yeah what did you think I said Cass and well, I thought you were talking about Enzo going to SmackDown no no no, no. I'm sorry maybe I misspoke uh, Cass uh, and Carmella they they gotta get teamed back up they gotta they gotta be together I think that this Ellsworth thing has run its course and put Cass and Carmella back together uh, on the same brand and it'll be fine and it'd be it would work out great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's I think it's gonna be difficult to see Enzo succeed as a smaller wrestler with not that great of wrestling skills. I guess you know, like because you put him in two hundred five, I think he is. I think he's definitely outclassed in the ring. Yeah, uh, yeah skills wise, yeah, yeah. But I mean, on the I mic, think, on the mic, think, he's great. On the mic, he's fantastic. I right? think you could put him on SmackDown, and he would fit in better size wise because. AJ Styles isn't that big. I mean, he's yeah. jacked, but he's not that tall. Yeah, but Sammy. Yeah, I get Sammy. You. Kevin Owens is only around six feet. You know, yeah. There's yeah. not a lot of great big tall guys. I mean, you got Randy and Jinder, but Corbin. And Corbin. Yeah. Yeah, but no, that makes sense. Put him over there. That would be good. Um, because he the the guy on the mic is great. I mean, he he's fantastic. So I mean, he makes Jericho look huge. That's true. Yeah. 
So, and I don't know. I mean, I know people have really like speculated about it in the past, but I mean, maybe he doesn't wrestle. Maybe he is just a manager. I don't know. I don't. I would I don't... love for a manager to be around. You know. I know. I mean, we get Paul Heyman every once in a while, but I want a, like a legit like like stable man. I want the Heenan family for Christ's sakes. I know. I know. Like I want somebody to manage multiple people. A million now. dollar team. Yeah, and that's a funny thing too. Like back in the day, like they weren't even like a really classified as like a stable. It was just the Heenan family. Like he just managed. Right. You know, if you it know? Was, it's similar to like being a Paul Heyman guy, you know, it's Jim, just... Jim Cornette would have, you know, four or five, six guys he'd, he'd manage. And yeah, they gotta, they gotta do that know, again. Yeah. Jimmy Hart would do Hogan and then, you know, whoever Hogan was friends with at the time. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Brutus. <laughs> yeah. Br- Brutus. Yeah. Always Brutus. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I, I match lasted like five minutes, so I, I wasn't too invested in yeah, it. Yeah, but it was five minutes of just kick to the face. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It didn't. It didn't really look or make anybody look great. I don't think. I mean, it made Cass look dominant over Enzo, but it made, it made Cass look like a dominant jerk. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I it was my probably my least favorite match on the on the card. Uh, let's see, Cesaro and Sheamus. Uh, versus the Hardy Boys in a 30 minute Iron Man match for the tag belts. I thought it was pretty good. I thought yeah. it was really I thought it was yeah, a really, really good, good match. Um I thought it was like really well executed too. Came right down to the wire. I thought oh, how about that first pin though? Uh remind me what was it? Where uh where uh let's see uh Cesaro distracted uh Matt Hardy and Sheamus like uh, perform the bro kick like right off. Yeah, boom. yeah, yeah. Boom. One zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I thought this match was great. Uh, right down to the wire, like the lat. You know, Jeff goes for the pin. He just runs out of time. I thought it was cool. I thought uh, I thought it was just four complete professionals in there, and they put on a really. Uh, I the thirty minute. I'm kind of getting sick of them throwing around Iron Man matches uh, for a 30 yeah, minute. 30 minute <laughs> I don't know. That's not really Iron Man territory, especially when you get four guys to share the load. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's kind of my point. It's like, eh, okay. And I, I, when they did, when NXT did the 30 minute Iron Woman match, like, or was it, was that an NXT? Yeah. It was NXT, right? Bailey and Sasha. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been like forever. Uh, it feels like, but yeah, they, uh, when they did the 30 minute one, I was like, ah, 30 minutes. Like I remember like HBK and Bret Hart, like going an hour, like that's Iron Man territory. That's what I want right there. Right. But they just throw Iron Man around. Like it's going out of style. It's funny too. Cause like they have, I nothing. can't wait. I can't wait to the 20 minute Iron Man match. <laughs> yeah. The 15 minute Iron Man match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it's funny because they have all this time and all this like programming. Now it's like, you feel like they could fit in an hour long match. I mean, it would be pretty epic because it doesn't happen, but hell man, they did it back in the day, you know, right. and it was, and it was iconic, but I guess they got to find, you know, find everybody, somebody. everybody has to have a match nowadays on the, on the pay-per-views. So. <laughs> Apparently. So, uh, let's see. So uh, Seamus and Cesaro, uh, they retain, they, they retain. They've turned into a very good tag team. I love them. I think they're great together. I was definitely a little weary at first, that, but I'm glad that Sheamus has gotten Cesaro to be a bit of a jerk again. Yes. I, I always kind of liked, you know, heel leaning Cesaro. Oh yeah, yeah. When he first came in, he was he was like full fledged heel. He was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it was great. I think their tag team's great. Have you seen them on? Uh, uh, what's the oh ride along? Have you seen that episode of Ride Along with those two on there? It's no. great. It's so funny. It's the best. Uh, Seamus like had just come back from a wedding in Ireland, so he was like saying all like all this Irish like terminology, and Cesaro is just like shitting all over him because of it. It's so funny. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I uh, went to the gym, went home, took a kip," and he's like, "A what? <laughs> a, sorry, a nap." And uh, <laughs> like he's just saying like all this different, all this. Went to the bar, got pissed. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, they're they're great. I love them together. Uh, and then, uh, what d- did uh, when did um, the revival attack the Hardys? Was that was that the next night or was that that night? Uh, I don't know. It blends then, together because I know I know it all blends together. I can't remember if it was the night after on Raw or if it was at the pay per view. But the revival gets involved with the Hardys, so 
that starts up their feud. So I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what's happening for Cesaro and Sheamus right now with the Hardys and the Revival are going to feud. Right. I mean, w- whatever. I mean, good on Cesaro and Sheamus. They get to sit on the titles for a while. I mean, so sure. I think they've got a new, uh, you know, tag team brewing right now with uh, Dean and Seth. Yeah, I. I that's going to be pretty cool. I don't think they're going to go full fledged uh, Shield reunion. They're going to leave Roman out because he's. The I'd man be rolling out too. I would too. I mean, I think that leave the crowd wanting more. I think Seth and Dean are kind of at a at a I don't know, just like a halt right now. They don't know what to. WWE doesn't really know what to do with either guy. So put them in a tag team. You know that'd be cool. I dig that. Uh, let's see. Up next, we had Sasha and Alexa. I thought this match was good until the ending. I thought the ending was like pretty. Yeah, the shit. ending was the ending was bullshit. I mean, yeah, I, I hate. I mean, it's smart heel, you know, championship tactic. You know, it's just championship of champions advantage. But yeah, but I feel like that's a that's a move for the build. I hate when pay per view matches end and like shit like that, like count yeah, outs. It, or it, it would have been better suited on like a raw. Right. Exactly. But, yeah. So. But no, I, I mean, I think that these two work well together. Um, I wasn't totally hyped for the build. I thought the build of this match was like not the best. I thought it was kind of just thrown together. Um, here's a question that I have for you uh, regarding Sasha Banks. Do you think that the Sasha Banks hype train ever gets rolling again? Because I feel like she's... I don't know. I think with the... the the fan love for Bailey and for Alexa bliss is equal to Sasha Banks. Now I think when Charlotte was there, people hated Charlotte. Right. I mean, but Alexa bliss is such an awesome heel that they, that they love her, you know? <laughs> yeah. But like, remember when Sasha like first came in, like people were loving Sasha and she got like, it was all this, you know, got to push Sasha. Like they were chanting Sasha during like other women's matches. Uh, and it was really crazy. And then, you know, she was in with... Uh, yeah, but I think it has to do with who else was on her brand, you know? Right. Um, I mean, that, yeah, was like, during, that was during, like, the women's revolution stuff. You had... Um, I mean, Naomi wasn't the star that she is now, I don't think. Um, no, no, no. And then she was in, like, that little stable with all of them. Like, right. To me and... Uh, it, that was bad. All those little female stables. They were it all... It was. It was team bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. No, but yeah, like Paige was still around, but they weren't really doing much with her. Like it was a, uh, it was a weird time. So yeah, she definitely got pushed to the forefront, at least in the fans' eyes. Uh, and then I don't know. You know what I think really hurt her was the hot potatoing of the title. I don't think she had like a lengthy title run. No, yeah, you're right. She didn't. And so and, like, she, and... she kept giving back to Charlotte, and then it was just like, well, okay, I guess your time's over. You're, you, but you're a three time champ now. Well, great, but. You know, the, the yeah, hype is gone. Charlotte, like a seven time fucking champion now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I was thinking about that the other day. If like she's ever going to get like that kind of reaction again, she still gets a, it gets, it gets a huge pop. But it's like, like you said, I, there's I still so wish the other... women were all on either one show. I know. Or they did like, uh, you know, a women's only show on the network, like 205 Live. Like yeah. I, I'll go on and watch 205 Live because the wrestling is great. Wrestling's awesome, yeah. It's, I it's... will say, though, I will say that, uh, I, I mean, I'm definitely on board for that. I love that idea. I always have been ever since you said it. I was like, yep, that sounds great. I will say, though, having, like, Naomi on SmackDown uh, has really right. given her the opportunity to kind of, like, be a champ and kind of test that out. Like, I but don't the, think... The Raw Women's Division and the SmackDown Women's Division are night and day. Yeah, yeah. The SmackDown Women's Division is... I mean, they're all involved. They're all kind of circling the top. They're yeah. all, you know, matches. I mean, you got Tamina has been like featured, you know? I know, which is crazy. Um, but I think worst. that's a, I think that's a blessing and a curse, though, because oftentimes I don't think that they are invested in the women uh, as much as they should be. Actually, probably like ninety nine percent of the time, uh, and that's like their answer to it is like, well, let's just throw them all in a match together. But uh, they should be creating separate storylines, you know, like, I don't know. That's what I think, at least. They they need separate storylines. And I love Naomi as champ on SmackDown. Yeah, um, no, it's great. I, I just don't think she would have gotten that opportunity if she if they were all bundled together 
if she had to compete with Sasha and Bailey, like, cause I think the, I think her, her, her pop now is great. Like her whole image right now is awesome. The glow is like one of my favorite things. Her entrance is, it's probably one of my favorite entrances right now, but like, I think back before that really kicked off, if she, if she had to like go straight on head to head with Sasha's pop and Bailey's pop, like I think she would have got pushed back a little bit. So I, I'm, I'm glad that she is on SmackDown and kind of reigning over there, but yeah, I do like it when all the women can, you know, be in the same division and, and, and compete together. Cause it does get weird. Cause now they're going to do another shakeup I hear. And it's just going to be awkward that they just keep passing around like titles and People. spots and yeah. And like, you know, like what's Carmela been doing? Like she hasn't really been doing much of anything. Uh, it's just, she had met, she mentioned like this week that she had the money in the bank briefcase. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot all about that. Right, Exactly. She should be out there like teasing that thing, that cash in every time. But I don't know. Remember when remember when people who had the money in the bank brief, briefcase were like featured every single week, like right around the top, you know, they were always yeah. hanging around the title. And it doesn't seem like that, that at all. Like I haven't seen Corbin like like jump out there and be like, Yeah, Jinder Mahal, I got this. What no, are you gonna do about it? You know, he's, do, yeah, he's doing something stupid with Shinsuke, like I don't know. But anyway, uh let's see. We talked a little bit about it earlier, Miz uh versus Dean Ambrose. With the Miz Tourage. Yeah, um, it was a it was a good match. I mean, they can definitely put on a match, uh, but I just like, again, I wasn't impressed with like. I like this biker look, Bo Dallas. <laughs> Bo, yeah, Bo Dallas, believe baby. I indeed, I've always loved Bo Dallas. I don't. He get... looks like his character from the last Marine movie. Oh yeah, I didn't see it, but <laughs> sounds good. And Axel was Axel in that movie too. Or yeah, no? he was a biker too. So <laughs> Axel. Oh, Axel looks sharp, man. He's wearing the suits. I mean, hell, man. He's looking I great. Think he's got a little spray on hair. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> For sure. But, uh, uh, you, you know, they give they give these women all these weaves. You think they can give Baron Corbin one? I mean, I know. Come damn. on. Put some money into that. Help, help a brother out. Yeah. Injury. Um, hair club for men. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> uh let's see braun versus reigns in the uh in the ambulance match i thought was really good yeah that was, a, that was a really good solid match i mean it was out of the norm it was brutal um again like, i thought i like for me braun, braun does all the strongman things that like yeah like the big show used to do but he's i don't Super know athletic. he looks way more brutal about it yeah i don't want to like fall into the majority of like total internet marks but dude i fucking love braun Strowman. i love braun i think he's so good uh and like if you if you when ever he talks he sounds like an absolute monster yeah I'm gonna be there. but if you ever see him or hear him like outside of character like oh he's a like the biggest redneck he's so cool he just looks like the nicest funniest guy like he's just cool man he's just a cool dude so uh i loved this match the only again i didn't really uh, like was the ending. I thought it was a little hokey. Like Reigns goes for the spear and <laughs> Strowman just moves out of the way. I was like, eh. It was just it was a little too like Wiley Coyote for me. I was like, eh. Okay. Well, I w- I, w- I wanted I wanted Strowman to like pick Reigns up and put him into the into the ambulance and like seal the deal and be like, I beat you straight up. I didn't like just trick you. Haha. <laughs> I move out of the way. Like because you know Strowman is that guy. He's he's a monster. So, um, yeah, but I think, I, I think it was okay because they were showing like how, you know, at times Roman could be almost on par power wise, you know, they try to yeah. show that. And, yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I wasn't like, it didn't turn the match. For me. I fucking love the match. That match is great. It was just, it was my, if I did have a gripe, that was the only thing. But. If Braun was just mindless strong man, uh, it would be, wouldn't he wouldn't be as interesting. I don't think, I mean, he'd yeah. still be pretty cool, but if he's got this little, little wrinkle of, of, uh, of cunning and planning, I'm, I'm interested. Oh, for you sure. Know? Yeah. And that he's like super athletic. I mean, not to God. say that, not to say that, uh, the big show wasn't, you know, back in the day, I mean, big show was doing like drop kicks off the top rope and shit in WCW, but I like Strowman can like kip up just, and he can do like the crazy. Of, uh, the YouTube videos of Strowman's dad playing softball uh is that real is that legit yeah i i've never actually watched them i've just kind of scrolled yeah, by was, them on he was Twitter. like the fucking 
Babe Ruth of fucking Major League Softball. And <laughs> yeah, oh, that's funny. Just, like home run, like every time at bat. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, I love the memes and the pictures that say Stroman's dad, but it's just uh, Snitsky. <laughs> right. I love that. Yeah, those are great. And he was like, he's like the spitting image of Braun, just not six eight. He was. Like, oh wow, that's you funny. Know, six five. Yeah. Oh, cool. He was, he was six five, three forty of fucking solid rock. He was a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so then we have Heath Slater versus Kurt Hawkins in basically a throwaway match just to I didn't even know that match was going on. No, because they were just showing backstage stuff of uh Reigns like actually killing Braun Strowman in it. <laughs> <laughs> they get made event paper going on last. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> when then they well dude, I just thought it was uh it was crazy. I mean Strowman like gets murdered in this <laughs> in this ambulance by Reigns. It was crazy, man. Um, I don't know. Overall, it's, it's overall though, good card. Really good card. Well, oh well, yeah, we still yeah, have Brock on, we Lesnar. Got, yeah, we got Brock Lesnar and uh, Samoa Joe. Man, I thought that match was intense. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, and uh, Samoa Joe was fucking badass. I've never been more of a Samoa Joe fan than I am right now. He's everything he does is absolute gold. Uh, the way he carries himself, his promos are solid. Uh, and he, I, it's funny. I think working with Brock really elevates uh, people. I mean, I, as much as I hated uh, his match with Ambrose at what was it? Was it WrestleMania? I think it was not WrestleMania two years yeah, ago. It didn't feel like a WrestleMania match, but no, the match, the match sucks. But I, I thought the build to that match was very good. I know I, I bring that up quite often as an example, but I, I think the build in this match was great. Uh, Samoa Joe just looked absolutely badass. Uh, you talk about a guy who is kind of cunning. Uh, Samoa Joe is definitely cunning. Like he, his little jabs, his little, the little like headbutt yeah, every, shoulder kind of thing he does looks like, like a shoot almost. You know? Yeah, yeah. His wrestling moves. Don't look like wrestling moves for the sake of a wrestling move. You know, it's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of fluff type moves. They're all like killer moves. Like yeah, like these would be the these would be the pro wrestling moves you'd use in a real fight. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah, dude. When he like stormed down to the ring, and Lesnar was just Lesnar's in the ring, and he stormed down there and just stood like stared at Lesnar in the face, and then did like that little shoulder bump, headbutt kind of thing, and knocked Lesnar on his ass. That I like that was so badass. Like that is that's what a, a fucking tough guy does. You know, you go up yeah. to the bully, you yeah. go, you you go up to the bully, you look him in the eye, and you fucking headbutt him in the face. And that's what Samoa Joe did. And I went, Whoa, I was like, this is for real. Um, and I thought this match delivered big time. He's it's, it's like like you said, like the bully, like Brock Lesnar's the bully on, on, on the playground who's knocking everybody over pushing all the little kids down and some of the other kids go, Hey, do you, that Samoa Joe guy's pretty tough. Do you think we could get him to like, just fight on our side? And he will just cause he likes fighting, you know, right? he's not actually friends with anybody, but he's like, I'll take this motherfucker on, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't, it, that being said, I don't think anybody uh, thought that Samoa Joe was actually going to beat Brock Lesnar, but he put up a hell of a fight and he basically beat the shit out of Lesnar this entire match until the very end. Right. But, but I thought he looked great. And uh, I love that they're pushing Samoa Joe right now. And I love that it like, didn't end. I like, I, like That was my biggest fear going to this, is that he'd get this shot and that this was just like a build. I mean, Lesnar has killed everybody. Yeah. I mean, except for Goldberg, who is Goldberg, you know. Right. Oldberg. I mean, anyway. Goldberg. Yeah, I mean that had to happen for like promotional reasons, you know. You try to build it up, right, but right. everybody else that Brock Lesnar has faced, and even his, you know, WrestleMania win over Goldberg was an absolute slaughter. You know, yeah, absolutely. He he hasn't looked tested at all to anybody, you know, except for Samoa Joe right now. You know, yeah, I I, I thought Samoa Joe looked great, and I like that they're continuing it. Um, they're gonna do a fatal four way at SummerSlam. With Joe Brock, uh, Strowman, and Reigns, and I would. There's gonna be bodies flying everywhere. Oh, it's gonna be a crazy match. I mean, I would. It would be a real shame if they went the safe way and like gave it to Reigns. 
I would love to see Samoa Joe get his moment. I mean, I know it's not WrestleMania, but it's SummerSlam. It's one of the big four. And if Samoa Joe wins the universal title at SummerSlam. I, okay. Out of those four guys, who's the smartest guy in the ring? Who's the smartest guy in the ring? Yep. Samoa Joe. It's got to be Samoa Joe. It's got to be. Yeah. Right. I mean, we know Lesnar's no, you know, he's no rocket scientist and no, he's, he's all, he's all power. Yeah. Braun is all beard and power and uh, with a little bit of cunning, like you said earlier. Right. <laughs> uh, and Roman, right. Roman doesn't know whether he wants to be a heel or a baby face or a badass or the funny guy. Hey, he's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's just the guy. Remember when he used to say that every week? Stop. I just physically got sick when you said that. My stomach <laughs> did a flop. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I re- yeah, I don't like his shtick when he tries to be the funny guy. Like, there was a, again, I think it was like the week after. Uh, yeah, it was a week after uh, Great Balls of Fire. Uh, Lesnar's in the ring, and Joe comes out, and like Reigns is there. And like Reigns is trying to like just yuck it up and like say some some quirky like one-liners and it's like fuck you man like Samoa Joe is gonna murder you (laughs) like shut up like nothing about this is funny like there should be no comedic relief in this promo so get the hell out of here right I don't know he's the big dog he brings the big fight did you know he brings the big fight I don't know his catch lines are so cheesy too don't get me wrong, dude. I, I everybody does their bashing of Roman. I like I like Roman. I think he's a really good wrestler. Like the guy can put on a hell of a match. Uh, but like they just feed him. I just him. want Roman to not talk and just act tough. Is yeah, that and that's it. That's all you got to do. But they just feed him garbage lines. Ugh. Ugh. Just anyway. don't talk. Just just walk into the ring like a pissed off Samoan, punch the people in the face, leave. Yeah, every time he is brought up uh, retiring The Undertaker, I'm like, yes, that just keep doing that. Keep talking shit about The Undertaker because that's what a bad guy does, and that's that's what he should be doing. He should just be brash and cocky and be like, yep, this is my yard now. I retired The Undertaker. Fuck you. That's it. That's all, you, that's all I need to do. You know? Yeah. But But, of course, he comes in, and he'll do that, and then the next week he comes in and goes, make some shitty – line like oh, oh, oh come on Oose. what's this guy all about over here it's like okay yeah Samoa Joe no. is not your I, I wish I wish ex. I wish uh Reigns would do more of a uh Asuka type you know doesn't say a whole lot a lot of facial yeah. expressions uh you're not really sure if he's uh you know gonna play fair or not you know uh how how tough is he how crazy is he you know yeah you just don't say yeah. much don't say yeah. shit yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I hope the build to SummerSlam is decent and that they just bill him more as like a badass. Uh, this match is just look at like the testosterone in this match. You have all of like these badass guys in this one match. They're all pretty similar when it comes to badassery. Brock, Samoa Joe, uh, Strowman. And Reigns, it's just, it's intense. There's no, there's not like a guy over there that's like, oh, this guy's a high flyer. This guy's a technical wrestler. This guy's a brute. Like, they're just all going to bash each other's faces in. It's going to be, oh, it's gonna awesome. be like four bears in a fight. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait for that match. So It's, gonna be like, it's like two grizzly bears and two black bears. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Nice. All right. All right. Well, that was Great Balls of Fire. We can switch over to Battleground. We spent a lot of time on Great Balls of Fire. We will not spend as much time on Battleground because no, Battle- because uh, Battleground uh, fucking sucked. Battleground was terrible. Started off with one more, you know, match where Ty Dillinger does not win. I, I don't English. get it. I I don't know how. I don't know how. You're not on board with Ty Dillinger 150%. I just don't understand. You would think they would have learned, you know, I don't know, Bad News Barrett. They did the same fucking thing with him, you know? Ugh. Just did. I mean, he was over. He was over. And they so made him over. lose every match for a year. <laughs> oh, you know what we'll do? You know what we'll do with him? We'll we'll uh, we'll make him win uh, King of the Ring, and then he'll be King Barrett. Ugh. And then he'll don the, the crown and uh and that's what we'll do with them and uh yeah and then we all know how that worked out yeah they haven't Jeez. had a king of the ring since yeah just terrible 
But yeah, I don't get the Ty Dillinger thing. I mean, hey man, Aiden English I, I, is great in my in my eyes, but is that guy ever going to be like a an actual contender? Probably not, um, unless something drastic happens. I thought he I thought he is well suited for the tag team division. Um, but Ty Dillinger, for Ty, me, Ty Dillinger ha- should be competing for the U.S. Championship. Thank you. Yeah, he has mid card champ all over him yes. and then maybe and then maybe someday world champ i mean he, he has a very like a very uh bret hart sean michaels kind of like career at least in my eyes where he he kind of goes right up the ladder with the mid card champ to contender to finally getting that championship uh, but happen. i don't know i don't I, I know it's not gonna happen i just don't know why it's not gonna happen um he has it all he's got charisma he's got ability i mean he, he's got it all and, he, and it's not like oh he has it all but it's still just potential uh and he hasn't put it together i mean the guys put it together the guy is super over the crowd loves the 10 thing his wrestling yeah. is top notch you know yeah i don't, I don't get it i don't know, it, I don't it's, know. But it's, anyway it's like being a fan of cesaro for the last five years you know you, you just you're not gonna get what you want yeah i mean cesaro has some injuries so i mean i can kind of i kind of see that like Maybe they're a little gun shy with him about you know about his injuries, but Andy's not very good on the mic. Uh, I think Dillinger's. I think Dillinger has it all together. He's the total package, man. Get just give that guy a push. I don't. I don't get it. Um. Anyway, uh, on to the actual pay per view. Uh, I thought this match was the only. Uh, maybe this, not was, old, this, was, this is a really good match. This was a really good match. Uh, uh, the, the Usos versus. The New Day, it was uh, Kofi and Xavier Woods with Big E on the outside. And I liked, I really liked uh, Xavier Woods in this match. He was, he was dynamic. He was doing top rope moves. He was doing power moves. It was, this is the best Xavier Woods I think we've ever seen. He's a really good wrestler, man. He's super underrated in the ring. Uh, Everybody, I think when they formed, everybody was like, oh, if they lose the belts, it's going to be because of Xavier Woods. And he's and the they weak- did do that a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's the weak link. And that was kind of like a under under, like an underlying storyline. But uh, he's definitely improved in the ring. He he's- battled his ass off in this match. Dude, how about that elbow? Like the, off the top rope from like. Yeah, it was he, gorgeous. I mean, he, I mean, it went from like coast to coast almost. It was crazy. He, got, he was so far away. So, I, I mean. I love that they captured the SmackDown titles. I think that's a good fit for them. Uh, I dude, the New Day are still so over. They're still yeah. super hot. They 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 have just hit it right on the head, you know, with that with that whole thing. Yeah, I was worried that maybe like it wouldn't last long and people would get sick of it. But dude, they still get huge pops. They're still like super original. They work uh, current events, like you know, their promos. Um, they're just really pop culture references are, are really on point. Like they're just, they're great. They're, they're so charismatic. Crowd, they come out and pour cereal in people's mouths. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was you know, great. Yeah, they so. have a, They have an entrance that involves the entire stadium. You know, when Big E does his, you know, you know, does his little, does his whole entrance spiel, you know, when you, they have a chant, yeah. they have everything that you've ever wanted a superstar to have, you know, yeah, a, I, a, I a memorable entrance, uh, you know, fan interaction on the way down. I mean, it's <laughs> it's perfect. I don't I don't see one thing wrong yeah. with it. I, I, yeah, but anyway, so they win and uh, and that was fine with me. I loved it. That was great. Um, I love it when when a when a oh. performer has a fan interaction built into their gimmick. I mean, you had Bret Hart giving the glasses to a kid outside the ring. You had mm. Rick Rude talking to guys' wives in the front row. I mean, that's <laughs> yes, <just> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, crowd interaction's great. Uh, uh, let's see. Up next, we had Shinsuke versus Baron Corbin. Uh, I not, not a ooh. bad match. I mean, I thought I think yeah. for as much as they built Shinsuke up in NXT, they have not done that on the main roster. No, and I thought his was, debut was really lackluster too. When they brought him in, I was like, eh, that's it for Shinsuke. They're just gonna kind of bring him in like that. Like it's weird. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I they're, I don't think he's got good chemistry with with Baron. No, he I, I doesn't. don't know. Not at it's, all. Um, yeah. I, I think he had good chemistry down at NXT because he'd worked with those guys before, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, he had 
you know, he he knew uh, Finn Balor from Japan. He worked with he worked uh, Joe and ROH, I think, and you know, it just worked out. You know, he knew those guys. They knew that that hard like indie more indie style of wrestling. And yeah. it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work as well on WWE. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I don't know what's going on with him, but it just hasn't been clicking. And this is, is something I think everybody was worried about. And, and, they, uh, and they, emphasize, the they emphasize the artist Shinsuke Nakamura all the time. What happened to emphasizing, you know, the hard hitting, the strong style, the king of strong yeah, the, style? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. The I don't know why. nature of his matches, you know. Uh, just the striking and and the quickness and creativeness of his offense. They're just not paying any homage to that anymore. I guess not. Like I don't know. I don't know why they do that. I, it's it's mind boggling to me. I don't know. Take the take the thing that has gotten the man over across the world and don't let him do that anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. It's weird. I don't know if there's like a trademark thing on the King of Strong style, but I don't know. They use it next day. I have no idea what is going on. It's it's crazy to me. But anyway, you know, this match, like you said, this match was okay. Um, it ended in a DQ, which never a big fan of. But I just don't think they have good chemistry. And I, I, no. I, I don't they know. Like Corbin make, should be. Corbin looked way too strong. I mean, he has. Yeah, exactly. He has like rocked a bunch of times this match. But they yeah. do emphasize, you know, both of their striking in the match, which is good. Um, yep. The suddenness of. Corbin's move set at times, you know, he has, yeah. he has some good, mu- good moves, you know, the deep six and the end of days. Those are both like fast moves. They can be done on the yeah. fly pretty much anytime, you know? Right. Yep. So I don't know. Time will tell with Shinsuke. I hope it works out for him. Cause I'm a big Shinsuke fan. Uh, he's going to take Cena on next week, uh, which is crazy. Um, that, ma- that match won't have a clean finish. No, I think Corbin gets involved and I, I don't even know if it starts to be honest with you. Cause I think Corbin, gets involved because everybody's like, oh, they're giving away this match for free. That's so stupid. This should be a SummerSlam match. It's like, well, right. I don't know, it's going to end up being Cena versus Corbin or something or a triple threat uh, match or. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It doesn't like that, but uh, let's see. They had the women's match. Um, it was a fatal five way to determine the number one contender for the SmackDown women's championship at SummerSlam. We had Natalia. Uh, she defeated Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Lana and Tamina. Um, pretty good little match, I thought. And I was really excited to see uh, Natalia uh, get the rub here. I think it's long overdue. Um, I was actually kind of rooting for Charlotte in this case. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I don't know why, but I thought that she's she's done enough over the last year where she should be. I mean, she's she's playing a pretty good heel right now. And she didn't. She had been friendly with Becky Lynch, but no, she's not going to let that get in the way of her her quest to become SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think that maybe what we were talking about earlier with Charlotte, like being the champ, like already so many times that they might be just giving her a little break, um, which I'm fine with. But I am surprised that they didn't give her this high profile match at SummerSlam for the belt uh, with Naomi. Cause I, I mean, nothing against Natalia. It's just, she hasn't been very high profile over the last couple of years. So I found that to be very interesting that they went with Natalia uh, at SummerSlam, uh, which only tells me that Carmella is going to cash in at SummerSlam. Um, so I don't know what, what they have. I, I'll be really, I'll be really bummed if Natalia doesn't get, uh, to actually perform, like if if like Carmella like jumps her like before the match and then cashes in or something, I don't know what they have planned, but I'll be bummed if if Natalia like at least doesn't get it doesn't get a moment because I think she's probably on the way out soon. You know, I was gonna say you maybe know, she's, she's winding her. down. You know, TJ being out. You know, um, maybe they want to start a family. You know, yeah. Uh, well, sure. I mean, I I think that her career is just might be coming to an end. She can still perform at a high level. I just, I think that there's a lot of up and comers. And then when you look at, you know, who they're going to bring in from this women's tournament, I don't know if there's a lot of room left for, um, there is, if you create your own show, (laughs) that's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would like to see her get a, get a nice SummerSlam moment. Maybe she captures the belt and then maybe Carmela cashes in on her or something, but I don't know something, but I did think it was an interesting choice. This match I thought was really good. Um, 
you know. Uh, but they kept it together pretty good. The 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 Lana Tamina thing is awkward to me. Do you think it's awkward? Uh, yeah. Because they're both just awkward. <laughs> so yeah, T- Tamina is super awkward. Yeah, I I I don't like that Lana is like they're just blatantly <laughs> making her a joke. Like they're like, oh, you shouldn't be a wrestler because like you're not good and like that's her gimmick is that she's not a good wrestler yeah. and that she's an e- and that she's an easy win uh so weird yeah so weird. weird becky lynch was on fire in uh, that match though Ah, uh, she's so good man she's another one that I, I i i hate to say it but she is almost like the new natalia i feel like she's going to have a career that's like similar to natalia's where she's just like she's she's kind of gonna always be a face uh and she's just bubbly and people love her and then she's gonna always just come up a little bit short right you know, she might const- get a, a title she's constantly be stepped on yeah she she's gonna she's gonna be a champ you know here and there but then like it she's always gonna play second fiddle to like charlotte and sasha you know so which is too bad because i really love becky i think she's so good i think she's i think she's uh, a better wrestler, a better technical wrestler than most of the girls there. I think, you know, I'm, I'll say it. I think she's better than Sasha. I don't get shit for that because I really love Sasha, but I think she's better than Sasha. Yeah, I, I think so too. Wrestling wise, yeah. way, way better than Sasha. Way better. Yeah, I love Sasha Banks. I, I think that she's extremely overrated though, but I think I love her. I think she's great, but I think that people are very quick to say that she is like not the best and sh- and she's not i think there are no, very a handful good. of women she's on a very good fundamental wrestler yeah. and she's got yeah. a couple of flourishes i think the bank statement is a is a great great submission finisher yeah uh especially when she can when she can roll it and keep it go- keep it on yeah or yeah, you know, yeah for sure you know at, at any different angle she can still like she manages to hold on you know she, you can't buck her off while she's doing it you know? right right yeah uh dude what did you think of kevin owens versus uh AJ Styles, what did you think of this ending? Because this match it went down exactly how we all thought it was going to until that awkward ending. Like th- we all knew that these two guys can bring it. It's we knew what kind of match it's going to be. It's going to be just one of those crazy matches. It's going to have crazy spots. Uh, it's going to be back and forth. We we know this match and we love this match, even though we know it. Um, but that ending, what was that? It was so weird. I don't know. <laughs> it was like. Uh, it was the slowest three count ever. I, w- I almost was like, did what the hell happened? Did uh, I, I thought at first I thought AJ like, didn't know that the ref was counting to th- three and maybe he thought that he was only on two or something, but it just seems so weird uh, that it was that KO um, gets the, you know, beats AJ for the belt in a really awkward finish. So, yeah. Um, Listen, those two guys, it doesn't matter to me who has a title. No, no. I those guys those two guys are amazing. So it was great. I thought it was a great match until the ending, but dude, the thing went like <laughs> the thing went 17 minutes. So that was great. Uh just back and forth. Um, they're both awesome. And then did you hear Kevin Owens after on Talking Smack, like after the pay-per-view? call himself the elite and then look at the camera and say wink wink to <laughs> to the elite Kenny Omega <laughs> <and> the <Young laughs> Bucks. <laughs> it was incredible and then he promptly lost the belt <laughs> on on Tuesday <laughs> so like oh no I wonder if that had anything to do with it or if they uh were or if something happened at the pay-per-view that wasn't supposed to happen because now um AJ is now the champ again so it's just it, it was a weird hot potato thing of the belt but again like you said it doesn't matter they're both awesome I'll, I'll watch that match anytime anywhere any place any any day of the week so <coughs> uh john cena uh, defeats rusev in a flag match what do you think of this what do you think is flag match i didn't like it i didn't like it either i hate flag matches i hate gimmicky matches like this I hate like super patriotic matches like this that include John Cena. <laughs> like he's so he's just too he's too like over the top, uber patriotic for my liking. It's just insane when he goes on this his spiels and his speeches about about the armed forces. It's like yes, we we get it, man. We all support the troops. Like chill out, Cena. But my God, he just he goes so overboard. 
And I don't know. This match, I just didn't, I didn't care for. Um, I like that Rusev's back. He looks great, but I've seen this feud before. I was not excited to see this again. So I'm all set with it. Um, uh, they're dragging flags on the ground, which I thought was like a little weird. I was like, yeah, seems like disrespectful. And yeah, I was like, geez, hey guys, what's going on here? So yeah. Yeah, I was like, what was all that <laughs> patriotism talk there, Cena? You're blatantly throwing like the U.S. flag on the ground. But I don't know. Uh, Sami Zayn defeated uh, Mike Kanellis. Uh, Kanellis is off to a great start on the <laughs> on the main roster. Jeez, yep. uh, which is too bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this is like a, a killer or anything. I think I think Canellis is going to be fine. But uh, you know, Sami Zayn got a win on a pay per view. That's right, pretty cool. Right. Keeps keeps Sami Zayn's position as gatekeeper intact. Keeps, keeps it alive. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good match. Uh, both these guys can work. It was cool for uh, Canellis to like immediately be on a pay per view. So I like that. I like that he's at least getting like a ton of airtime. Because I hate when guys debut who you're excited about and then they just do like vignettes or like backstage segments and then it's like a big deal when he gets in the ring. I, I like that he, they immediately got him in the ring. They're like, oh, okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, like Mike Canellis, uh, a.k.a. Mike Bennett, is like actually a really good wrestler. So here you go. He's not just like, uh, you know, like back, you know, playing like backstage to like his, his wife, you know, his wife's name. So he's actually right. like, He's actually like the focal point of, of all of this. So, uh, so I liked that. Um, hopefully this feud either continues or Canellis can kind of get something going, uh, and be, uh, a pretty strong heel. Uh, cause obviously we, we like Mike Bennett, but, um, Jinder Mahal defeats Randy Orton in a pin, uh, Punjabi prison match, uh, this, with the, I hate these, th- this match, especially cause there's so much shit to look through. Oh, it's the worst, right? It's Ugh. visually, it's terrible. It's visually, it's awful to watch it. Uh, watch it's hard to follow what's going on in the ring, you know, because the cameras are, you know, forty percent blocked by these fucking bars. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit every every angle. I'll admit, I don't think I looked up from my phone once during this match until the Great Kali came out. That was about it. Yeah, that was yeah. really the only time that I laid eyes on this match because I thought this match was, like you said, hard to see. And two, it's like I've seen these guys fight at three. This is the third consecutive pay per view now that these guys have fought at, and it's been like, you know, the same fucking match. Like I, I yeah, I, I, people want to have Kali that. come out and just hold Randy by his neck while Jinder crawls out. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, we get it. You're big. And yeah. those, those holes in the outside fence are so big that he could have dragged Randy right through one of them. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and Hey, don't get me wrong. I didn't, I, I don't hate this great Kali comeback, by the way. Um, I don't know. I think it fits, you know, uh, jinder has got like a little stable going on. I don't know if Kali's sticking around or not, but you know, he's didn't, got didn't the undertaker lose a Punjabi prison match for like, from like throwing like Batista, like through the cage. Yeah, I think so. God, I don't know. It's been forever. I'll have to go back and look, but I, and I didn't like those matches then. I definitely didn't like them now. So, um, for, yeah, first of all, uh, WWE, shame on you for doing a Punjabi prison match with nobody of Indian descent in the ring back oh, when they did that Undertaker Batista match. I'm like, why? Well, yeah. well, I think, uh, well, no, I think the thing with, I think it was Big Show and maybe Batista. it was Big Show. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Big Show and Batista because I think it was because Kali got hurt or something like right before it. So he wasn't able to compete. And so they threw Big Show in there. So. Whatever. It, it was just a clusterfuck. Probably, you know, not totally their fault. But anyway, um, I, I like this little stable that Jinder has going on. He's got the Singh brothers as like his little henchmen uh, to do his dirty work. And now he's got like this giant in Kali. And again, I don't know if Kali is sticking around or not, but it was definitely a cool appearance. Um, and if Kali sticks around, I think that'd be cool for a little bit. Um, you know, it adds a little bit more protection for Jinder and it makes him it makes some people will say, Oh, it makes him look weak. It, it's not, he's not a strong heel. I think it makes him look like a great heel. You know, he's yeah, getting, yeah. You're, you're managing minions now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah like you're, you're somebody to deal with. 
Exactly, exactly. So I, I love it. And people, oh, gender's boring. I don't think he's boring at all. I think gender's awesome. I, I definitely think his matches are a little boring, but it's because he's been fighting Randy Orton, who has become super boring over the last, like, Ugh. five years, you know? So give him somebody else to feud with, you know? And and sure, he works stiff, and he's he's not, like, the most versatile, like, wrestler, but I think character-wise, I think he's... I think he's right where he should be. I think he definitely is world champion uh, material. And I don't know that this is my, I opinion, agree. Yeah. So, uh, so those are the two pay-per-views of uh, again, great balls of fire. Awesome. Battleground. Not so much. Uh, hey man, what do you think of this? Jason Jordan shenanigans, Jason That's, Jordan, Kurt angle. It is ridiculous filler. <laughs> it's, it's so weird, right? Did you think, did you think that it was going to be something like this or did you, were you, one of the people that thought it was going to be like an affair, like Stephanie. God, McMahon I was or, hoping it was going to be like an affair with Dixie Carter or something. That's what I thought too. I thought Dixie Carter was going to be uh, the person on the phone, but uh, and then of course, like I read, oh, it might be his, you know, in illegitimate son or something. And I was like, oh, well, obviously Chad Gable. Like I think that everybody thought Chad Gable because like only other like Olympic wrestler <laughs> on the roster. Why wouldn't you go with that guy? But uh, no, I thought I thought the Jason Jordan thing was a nice surprise. If you're gonna do this like weird thing, I didn't hate it, but I don't know. I thought they've done a decent job of like kind of explaining it. Um, I'm just waiting for them to like totally fuck up and like just have this glaring loophole <laughs> where you're like, well, wait a minute. Well, I will say the only glaring loophole is uh, it's like why Kurt was so concerned about like tainting his legacy. I was like. Okay, well, what does this have to do with like your legacy? Yeah. I mean, you, this was like right. some something that happened like before you were married. It's not like you like you committed adultery or anything. Like this is, you know, th- this is back in college. You know, it's just like, I, and I don't get it. I don't know if it's if Vince McMahon still thinks that like having a black son if you're white is like <laughs> like a terrible thing or what. Oh, but it's a height of comedy. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but it is just below poop jokes yeah but like when it was revealed i was like oh that's kind of cool i didn't think of that but then i was like kind of backtracking it and i go oh well, why was why was kurt so concerned about this tainting his legacy like yeah this does not seem all that bad yeah this doesn't seem that bad you have you know you have like a wwe superstar for a son who's like an amazing collegiate wrestler um this is nothing but good news. You could take him under your wing. You could make him a champion. Like, I don't see the bad in any of this. Like, it yeah. just seems so strange. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We to him the know. angle slam. Yes. Oh, man. I hope it, I hope that this is a good push for Jason Jordan. Um, or other people are saying that, like, this might be, like, a whole ruse where, like, angle uh, Jordan is kind of, like, deceiving Kurt Angle for Triple H and Triple H and Kurt Angle are going to fight at WrestleMania. It's like, well, that would suck <laughs> you know, to just use Jason Jordan as, like, this pawn, you know? I think I want them to make Jason Jordan, like, a, a huge star because I think the guy, I think the guy's got it in him, you know? I mean, he's Kurt Angle's son, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, even just like in the the interviews, like the the interview segments, like I thought he handled himself well, and he he's he can you know put on the act. I thought it was good. So I know, was, but now at least Chad Gable high and dry on SmackDown, um, and he's now going to be you know pursuing a singles career. He's already had a couple of really good matches. Yeah, which I definitely love. I think you know he's had great matches with AJ Styles, and they've kind of shown that he can hang with a guy like AJ Styles. And so it's like, okay, maybe he is, uh, you know, maybe he's like that level, maybe he's at that level, or maybe he's just like at that level right below an AJ Styles where like, you know, he'll, he'll get there. He'll be a mid card, uh, champ like sooner rather than later. So I dig that, man. I I think it's going to work out well for both of them. Um, and if not, you know, you have American alpha to fall back on in the future, you know, you have that. Right. Right. So I, I definitely like, that they're rolling the dice on both of these guys. Um, I think it's, I think it's great. It's nothing but good news for, for both of these guys and for WWE. So, um, let's see what else, what do we, what else we have left here? Uh, John Ross, uh, our good buddy, John Ross is a listener of the show. We run into him at limitless shows. Uh, he gave us a little uh, message on Facebook and he wants to know our opinion 
of WWE going uh, transitioning out of the PG era. Um, we've definitely seen some glimpses of that. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of blood um, shed recently, and I don't know. Good, if, I know, right? Like, if like Finn's been opened up with a Elias Sampson guitar. I mean, I think that was more of a gaff than anything. Uh, I don't think that was on purpose, but it's just, you know, they're not really shying away from uh, stuff like that. I, I know. I mean, a, a guitar shot is actually like falls right into like out of the PG era. You know, it's a, uh, they wouldn't show that if it was PG era. That's like, that's back in the day, man. That's like right. the attitude era stuff. This is, so. this is, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, I dig it. I, you know, I think making a little bit more edgy is, is good. I think it's good for business. You know, people are, people want to see some of this stuff. Uh, and I think the crop of guys that they have now, like they're bringing in a lot of these, like these indie guys and like guys who've been around for a while, the Kevin Owens, you know, the AJ styles, like all these ROH guys and new Japan guys, like they're, they're recruiting all these, like not your typical, uh, born and bred WWE guys that can do all this stuff. I think that brings in their fans and their fans want to see stuff like this. They not so much bloodshed, but just like out of the norm moves and, and a little bit more hardcore stuff. So uh, I, I think that they're heading the right direction. I definitely don't want to see them go like ECW hardcore matches. And I'm not sure about bringing back the hardcore title or anything, but definitely making it a little bit more edgy, I, I think is a good thing. You know, right? I mean, there there's a lot of tweaks they could probably do to get. I mean, if I'm WWE, I'm looking at the past and I'm going to try to get back to my roots. Like, like how are you booking things in '94, '95, '96 before the boom of, you know, uh, the NWO and Stone Cold Steve Austin? You know, how are you booking, you know, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and you know Bam Bam and, um how are you booking those people and how can you relate, you know, that style to today, you know, mm. um, the matches can be more indie style matches like they have been. I think Seth Rollins has done a good job of wrestling a more high, high paced, uh, you know, indie or indie style. Um, and I think that's what people want. You know, they want old fashioned storylines, but new age wrestling. Yeah. That's a great way to put it, man. Good stuff. So hopefully that answered, uh, John Ross's question or um, his topic of interest there. Uh, let's see. No more, uh, no more talking smack weekly. That's a bummer. They're kind of just going to be doing it on like pay-per-views, I think now. Yeah. But, but um, Renee Young is going back to doing both shows. So she'll be tired. <sighs> yeah. That's too bad. I really like talking smack. I thought it was like a nice have they outlet. St- have they stopped doing the Brizango skits. I didn't no, see one this week. Still- uh, yeah, they did one. They did um, one? They, I might have skipped yeah, they, uh, Hulu. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm a week behind. I can't remember. I know that they got like, uh, they got jumped. Uh, the Ascension came in and, and said that they did it. And then they were like, oh no, get out of here. It wasn't you. And then like the lights went out and they got jumped. Um, and I think, I think that was like the fashion X files. Okay. I can't. I don't know what the next one is, but oh, but then Fandango got like dragged away, so I don't know what happened with that after that. But, so do yeah, but a, that's that's do another they have a match at Battleground. Negative. They had a. They had a spot though, but nothing happened. I can't remember what happened, but because I, I think it was nothing. Like it was just another segment, like another kind of backstage segment, kind of a thing. Oh. Um, but nothing really took place. I don't think. I don't know. But um yeah, anyway. Uh that's about it, man. That's a show. That's kind of like a month in review. Unless yeah. I, what do you got? Anything else? Anything else from you? No, no, no. I am stick out, huh? Uh no. Nothing nothing really. Nothing nothing more than yeah. usual. I mean, I went back I, feel like to, I, got, I watched uh, I watched Raw and SmackDown on Hulu this week, and I still think uh Smackdown's the better laid out show. Uh, I think so too. I, I really I think like, they got it. More I better. really, really, really like the two hour format. It's so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Three hours is way too much. Even just like this, even like I had to go back and watch some stuff to kind of catch up 
uh, just to prep for this very podcast. Cause I was like, Oh man, what have I watched this, this month with WWE? Cause we were like, so, so much on like the limitless and we're doing, we're doing a lot of other stuff like local stuff. So I had to like really go back and watch some stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, it's so much still, it's still yeah. so much. So, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's about it, man. Let's, uh, let's get on out of here. Uh, let's see. Listeners of the show. You guys can check us out on Podbean and iTunes. Give us a GD review or something or a rating on on iTunes. You know, that would help us out a little bit. If you'd like, that would be cool. Uh, let's see. We're at uh, Twitter, at Main Event Pod. Uh, I am on Twitter, at Johnny Fashion. What about yourself, Harmon? Where are you? Uh, I am Harmon316 on Twitter. Hell yeah, you are. Uh, we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash main event pod and on Instagram at main event pod. Uh, Harman, do you want to tell the folks a little bit about Teespring? We have a Teespring store. Yes. Go to our Facebook page and we have a link to our Teespring store and you can get uh, the hottest t-shirt at the latest Limitless Wrestling event uh, as worn by josh briggs and members of the back row mafia the main event podcast t-shirt tank tops sweatshirts hoodies hoodies now toddler Not clothes cool. i mean it's all there folks um we'd like to take a minute too to uh share a little something you know it's on facebook we've been sharing around i think we have a link on our facebook page is uh kevin quinn he's a referee in new england he, he refs everywhere uh, he had a bit of a, a medical scare and he was in the hospital and there is a page where you can donate to help out Kevin. Um, he's got quite a medical bill to pay off and he did not have any health insurance, but a uh, super nice guy. I met him down at a show in Rhode Island. Um, all, all the boys love him uh, all over the place. Uh, so there's a link in our Facebook page to you can go to uh, the page and donate to help out uh, Kevin Quinn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Want to give a shout out to follow the Fox, follow them on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash follow the Fox band. Uh, also on follow the Fox band.com. They uh, Sarah and Dylan, they do the intro and outro for our show and we love them very much for it. They're a band out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, Dylan's a goddamn Emmy winner. So right there, badass. So uh, go listen to them uh, if you can. Another shout out to that wrestling club. Thank you guys for giving us the best a monthly box available every single month. Uh, you guys are better than all the rest. And uh, that's about it. Big shout out to our buddy, Eric Ames, who always plugs the show and listens every week. Thank you so much, Eric. And uh, that's it. Uh, whew, Harmon, hell of a show. We covered so, so much. We did. Oh, my God. I am sweating right now. Good luck cutting this down. I know. God, what do we go like forever? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Harmon, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> always always or thanks listeners, for letting me join you I, I yeah don't there we go <laughs> listeners main event i'm half asleep i think i know you need to go to bed uh <laughs> all right guys hey listeners thanks for listening catch you later Bye. Podcast.